In this tutorial, we're going to treat and talk about Dart classes. Now, Dart is an object-oriented programming language. And if you have programmed before, I guess you might have come across object-oriented programming. So let's say you have a program that wants to have the some features of cars. So we have number of tires. You have the number of engines, which is normally one. We have the number of seats. So some cars have four seats. Some have two seats. So you can have other features like the name of the car. We can call this car Benz. Yeah. I think you know Benz, right? So, it's a popular brand. So, yeah, we have created one car with some features. But what if we wanted to create another car? We'll have to duplicate that code. Why don't we have like a bl blueprint? Something like a design that all cars should follow. So, that is one of the advantages of object-oriented programming. It helps us write less code so now what we'll do is now is to create a class now this class is going to have um a class kind of structures or tries to imitate real world objects right so real world objects have features and like can perform actions so this class of a car now has features it has the tire number it has seat number, it has speed, and it will have its name. So all these features, you can list as many features as you wish. Now, this is a design. Just like when you're building your house now, you have a house that has number of toilets, bedroom, kitchen. Now, you can use the same blueprints for building another house. But the blueprint itself is not a house. So a class is just a blueprint to tell you, okay, when you're building a car, you can use this. And this is what you used to build the object. Now the object is the actual, the actual car. So now I have a, an object. The name of the object is Bob's car. Now I instantiate a new car by saying Bob's car is equal to new car. Now in Dart 2.0, you don't need to use the keyword new. You just say Bob's car is equal to car. You don't need the new keyword. Now I've created two cars with the same blueprint. Bob's car and Jane's car. Now like all that blueprints, you can tweak some values. Now if we want to build a house. And in the blueprint. You're told to have um, two kitchens. You can say, mm, I want one kitchen. So here, Bob say he wants his color blue. And Jane wanted red. So they have the same basic um, structure. But you could tweak some features. Bob's, Bob's car can have two seats. And Jane's car could have four seats. But it's the same design and it's easier to maintain. Now, when you're starting programming, you may not have so many issues of trying to build maintainable code. But when you go to the industry, the, when you deal with live production code, you need to be able to maintain code. You need to maintain a simple design that's easy to maintain because once you have a design that's hard to maintain, when you go back to the design some months later or years later, you will have a headache trying to edit anything. But with this design now, we can say, okay, every car has these features. But imagine we had to give Bob a different set of variables, give Jane a different set of variables. Things get clumsy by the time we start creating 100 cars. But with a base design, our car we know that anybody that creates a car has these features so now we can access the members of the class as you can see 
this will print out different values for Bob and Jean. So Bob's seat number will be different from Jean's seat number. So by the time we print it out, we see different values. Now we can add functions to class. Now we can call, we call that methods. That is the functions in classes. So we can add a method now that will start an engine. So we can call that method start engine. So if we have that method, both Bob and Jean will be able to call that method. And we can tweak it to start the engine in different ways. But first and foremost, let's just write the method in the first place. So we call it start engine. And like you learned earlier, a function in Dart does not need to return the type. It infers it, it knows the return type already. So once I call start engine method, it prints start engine. Engine started. So we can go up and start Bob's car and start Jean's car. Both of them starts the engines. So there is no really big code here. This is a very simple code. And we can easily say Jane start her engine. Start the engine. Start the engine. Engine started, yeah. And we can also say Bob start your engine. So you have two cars that started the engine. So voila. Now we could also calculate repair cost. Let's say we have a method that wants to calculate the repair cost of um let's say repairing the car. So we want to calculate how much it costs to repair the car. We're just going to write a fancy code that will print out a different repair cost depending on some features in the car. So let's say that if you have a seat number, like we would multiply your seat number times two, that will tell us your repair cost. So for example, I can say your repair cost is seat number times two. And for, yeah, we'll do this. So when we go on, Jen's repair cost is $8 because Jen has a seat number of four and four times two, eight. So her repair cost is eight. So I can call the same method for the different object and to give me a different value. That slash in front of dollar sign, the first dollar is to make it not see it as an actual, to see it as a string. That is the first dollar before the other dollar. Now I can add customer name. So I can say repair cost for the customer name. Repair cost is that for the customer name. So I can repair cost is $8 for Jane. So I put her name there. There are easier ways to make this a simpler code, like, but I'm just doing this for the tutorial and to show you how this works. And for Bob, the repair cost is $4 because he has two seats. I know most often um, a car with two seater, especially a sport car, actually more expensive, but this is just for a tutorial. So the next thing we would do is to add a constructor. Now, a constructor is the first method that runs once an object has been created, once this class has been instantiated. A constructor normally has the same name as the class. So here, I will have the constructor print new car created. So anytime a car is created, it will automatically run. It runs automatically. So you have, if I create any car, like if Bob created a car, when I instantiated it up, it will automatically print new car created. So now you see two cars created. So you have new car created and new car created printed twice. 
if it's once you have it once so i didn't call any method there it ran automatically i didn't really need to explain all this because this tutorial series is for someone that has programmed before and this is very similar to other object oriented programming languages is quite similar just little differences in syntax probably maybe var apart from that very similar quite the same thing so now we can add our parameters to the constructor so that we can instantiate our parameters while creating the car so here when you're creating the car you can put the tire number seat number speed transmission and color so that i don't have to start saying bob dot tire is equal to tire number bob dot seat number is equal to seat number and be assigning it step by step i can actually just um put the values in the constructor so now i'm going to use this as in the value this now let me make something clear the only time you use this is when the parameter in the constructor is the same as the variable name in the class so for example this variable tire number is the same as that in the constructor so you use this to refer to the instance variable in the class now the second variable seat number is not the same as the variable seat so i don't need to say this dot seat number apart from that the other variables are, are similar or the same the same name as what is passed through the constructor i guess you also know this also but if you don't know it ah that is what you use this for this d t h i s so if the names of the variables or the parameters coming from the constructor was different if they were different then you would need to use this but when they are similar you try to tell the program this is the variable i'm referring to there's the one in the class and the one coming from the constructor so when i'm creating a new car i put all my variables in the constructor so the first four represent the tire number the second four represent the number of seats speed 250 kilometers per hour the one could be miles per hour or meters per second maybe the jets and transmission manual color blue so there you have it we have created bob's car so we could that that makes the line shorter as you can see we didn't need to start saying bob's bob's car dots tire number is equal to four bob's car dot seat number we didn't need all that we cannot calculate the cost and what this will do is that when you print it you see repair cost is eight for bob now why is it eight because when i was creating the car I told it the seat number is four so the function repair cost multiplies the times two so i can also add this which was there before i want to print out when a car is created so i'll print out the color of the car and tell it it's created bob's car is blue so when i print it out it tells me new blue car created but if you look at this constructor it's a little bit mm, doesn't do much so why shouldn't it be so long that allows us to shorten this by doing this literally so i can say this dot tire number so what it's saying is that the first parameter is going to go to the instance variable tire number so it's talking about the instance variable tire number instance variable seat number it's talking about the seat number speed transmission type and color so once it's passed in it goes straight away to the variables 
You don't need to start assigning it inside the constructor. This is what they call synthetic sugar. Now we have what we call named constructor. For example, let's say you want to create another type of car, but we'll call it police car. So to, to create a named constructor, you use the dots symbol in front of the constructor, like the constructor, the constructor is car, so car dot police. Now, I may need this in situations where I want to create a new car, but I want to have some tweaks to that car to make it a police car. I can also put constructors there in case I want to give liberty to put some variations. I can say transmission type, but I can just leave it as that. The person can only change whether it's automatic or manual. Then let's say in the other variables, I can set some um some things that won't change for police cars. So imagine if all police cars, let's say all police cars have um four tire numbers, yeah. And seat number, let's say four, because it needs to carry enough officers and extra space. And the speed, let's say they have a particular car they all use. You know, some states have like a particular car the police use. So when you're creating a police car, it's constant. So we call it 20 kilometers per hour. So we can also say the color. And mm, police cars, you have different colors, but we'll make this one black. So when you create a police car, these variables are just going to be created. They're not asking you to provide them. The only thing you provide is the transmission type, whether it's automatic or manual. And after the police car is created, I can say new police car created. When you, when you, the cops are coming for you. So, yeah, when we now go up to instantiate the object to create a new police car, then we can pass in our transmission type. That's all. You can use this for different use cases. Like, allow your mind to be creative. You can use um, name constructors to do a lot of things. I'm just showing you in the instance of police cars. So I create a new variable, call it fresh cups. Fresh cups with some fresh donuts. So now I give the police car a transmission type, automatic. That's all I need. So a new police car created. And that's all I need. I can say fresh cups dot speed. Or start engine yeah because they all have engines I didn't need to do that so it's a police car but a branded car so you can use name constructors to tweak your tweak your values a little bit and I think that's that's really nice you can use this for different like that's why I really like programming. You're, you're allowed to think freely. For those of you that create different programs, sometimes you want to create some constructors that do different things. So this helps you, you know, do that. You're not stuck to one constructor name. You can do different names to tell you what the constructor is doing. So now we have initializer list. Sometimes you want to initialize some variables before the code in the method runs. This can be helpful for um could be helpful for using final variables for instantiating final variables. So let's say you have a class students and you have your constructor and you want it in such a way that the user provides the year the student was born, yeah? But you want the age calculated before the body of the constructor runs. You could actually do this calculation before the body runs. Oops. So here, we're going to collect the year the person was born. 
Yes, year born. Now, to do an international list, you put a colon and the operation you want to do before the body runs. So here I can see age is equal to 2019 minus year born. So if you notice, the age hasn't been given by the user, but I calculated it before. This, is, this isn't inside the body of the student constructor. This is before it. So this code runs before it. So I create a new student. And I can give the person a name. No, give the person an age. Give the person a year born. So 2000, when you subtract it, the person is 19 years old. So where did the age come from? This age was calculated before the body of the method ran. That is the constructor. So the code runs before the constructor body runs and you can as other features i've shown you can think freely and this can really give you a lot of ideas of what you can do if you want different code to be run you can separate them by a comma for example here i'm saying that once we calculate the age if the person is greater than 18 he or she is qualified if not the person is not qualified so all this is run before the body of the constructor is run. Initializer lists are really handy when you're setting up final fields. So they are a nice tool really. So as you can see, this person is 90 years old and is qualified because is qualified here yeah. because it's qualified is greater than or equal to 18 but a nine-year-old guy is not qualified he's not qualified he's not qualified like not qualified so let me give you one more example one more example so we have i'm going to use name constructor just to show you another example of using name constructor so you know when you're applying for mm, let's say you're applying for masters when you're applying for what now you know there's some applications that give exception to some people now let's say um you're applying to for school you're applying for masters now and in the masters you're not allowed to apply for the masters if you're less than age 18. So let's say the person reviewing you is going to call the new student constructor. Now he puts your age and he puts whether you're qualified or not. So now you're 14 years old, it can put 14 and not qualified, obviously because you're lower than the age. So we have the student constructor, the age and the qualification. So you have new student 14 not qualified. That value is put by the person reviewing it. But let's say there's some special students, yeah. Some really intelligent students who is what a scholarship. So let's say we have a constructor which when used, we ignore the person's age and the person is automatically qualified. We might just take the person's age for documentation purposes. So here we can say a student constructor for special students right so now for example 14 years old is not qualified but what if this person was a special very young brilliant student who is meant to be qualified but i want to use another constructor instead of using the student constructor because let's say in a student constructor if you're less than 18 you're not qualified so we can name another constructor and say student.talented. So this is for very special talented students. And all we collect is the age because we don't care 
about the qualification you're already qualified we just want to collect your age for you know documentation purposes and we can call the constructor of the main that's the main constructor by using this so what i did here is i collected the age i now called the student constructor that is the first main constructor I passed in the age and I passed in qualified. So this student totaled didn't really do anything, doesn't really have a body. All he did was he collected the age and automatically put qualified for me. So I didn't have to type qualified up. So as 14 years, yeah, you're not qualified. But if I say student dot talented, you're talented. I just collect your age and you're automatically qualified. It still calls the normal constructor, but it passes in qualified there. So I just did some funny tricks here. Not really funny, but I did some some use cases where you can use um, name constructors. So it's really cool. And this is beautiful. So in the next tutorial, we've not finished all with classes. We still have more to do with classes. I will talk more on abstract classes, extending inheriting classes, and other aspects of object-oriented programming in um, that. So you can play with it. You can even create a new constructor and say it field interview. So if I create a student that filled the interview, I don't want to know whether you're qualified or not. I just collect your age. And I passed in, you didn't qualify. So I can easily say collect age and not qualified. Kind of the opposite of talented. So really you can do as you wish with this different use cases. I will see you in the next tutorial.